Hello, welcome on Alt Control. Tatiana here. I'm a French game designer and artist. I make alternative controller games and playful installations. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made my last game installation titled Love's Funks. Love's Funks is a sort of musical puzzle game that I designed and developed with Olivier Drouet. It's a project in continuity with a work we started in 2017 with Contre Ciel on game concepts that I call musical Rosetta Stones to explore. Those are riddle game installations with a grammar of interaction based on music theory that's hidden from the player and controlled with a musical instrument. In Contre Ciel, there's an artificial sky controlled with a MIDI keyboard. Players can change the night and day cycle, the weather, and the planet from which the sky is watched, based on what they play. The relationship between what's played and the sky's alteration is enigmatic on purpose. It's more playful installation than a game, as there is no clear goal in Contre Ciel. With Love's Fox, we wanted to make a proper riddle, an experience where players have to actually crack the code to win. We also wanted to work with audio signal rather than MIDI and ended up using a metallophone as our controller. To make this game, we applied to the Artist in Residence program of the Chateau Ephemer, and we've been selected. The Chateau Ephemer is a cultural place of artistic creation specializing in sound and digital arts located not far from Paris. It's a small castle built in 1907 by William Kissam Vanderbilt, an American millionaire passionate about horse racing. The place has undergone a lot of transformation since then. At some point it was an aerodrome, but then the castle was long abandoned, so the urban community took over the building and entrusted its rehabilitation to an association headed by Sébastien Campos, the current director of the place. They built concert halls, a lab, workshops and recording studios, among others. Today it's a third place dedicated to sound and digital arts, but the place also has communal vegetable gardens, a restaurant, a co-working space and runs workshops with young people from the neighborhood. All these activities are carried out by a wonderful team with whom we had the pleasure of working for three weeks. We applied there for a production residency, meaning that we went there to actually build the installation. So in June, I really started designing the grammar of interaction and the installation before starting the residency. I modeled full-scale plans of the installation, that I made cutaway views to visualize how the different parts would be assembled and nested in one another. For the visual part, I identified as many avenues of research as I could regarding the shapes, materials and lighting of the installation. The simultaneously enigmatic and electronic dimension of the installation pushed me to explore patterns between mashrabia and printed circuits. Then mid-July, I documented it all in a sort of game design document. And after that, we made a lot of technical tests to make sure all plans were feasible, like electronic prototypes, frequency analyzing programs, and cardboard models. And then in late August, we took the road. We arrived on Monday morning. After dealing with the administrative part and unpacking our stuff, we started working right away. The manufacturing work was our priority, so we went straight to the vendor lab. We mainly laser cut foam boards of different synthetic polymers like polyurethane. The whole installation is mobile and is based on a servo motor, so the weight of the device was a crucial issue for us. For the filtering of the light, I wanted something close to Japanese lamps, so we worked with rice paper and parchment paper to blur the hot spots of the LEDs. For the largest parts like the plinth, we worked with a CNC milling machine on plywood sheets. For the electronics, after making all the wiring and soldering for 17 hours, we used an Arduino Mega to control addressable RGB LED strips inside the installation and a servo beneath it. Olivier used the FFT algorithm and the audio and microphone classes in the Unity native library to analyze the frequencies coming from a mic placed over the metallophone. 
The interfacing between Unity and Arduino is done with Uduino, a tool that allows these two software to communicate through a library uploaded on the microcontroller. For the music and sound effects, I mainly worked with instruments and objects based on vibrating metal somehow to match the metallophone sound, but I also took some of these sounds to make drones to feed the electronic and enigmatic atmosphere I was looking for. I finished with some haunting vocalizes to polish the mood, but also to give the players some hints. And finally, I did my best to mix it all, which is made even harder by the fact that most of these sounds must be mixed interactively. There are also some animations projected in the installation that I made with Photoshop and exported as an images sequence so Olivier could integrate them like a regular game sprite. For the exhibit space design, we blacked out the windows and worked mainly on the lighting to give a somewhat cold and enigmatic atmosphere. I made filters and masks by hand to master the cutting and visual texture of the light. For the sound, we just played a little on the stereo with very directional speakers. And we ended the residency with a few playtests before the opening of the first exhibition of Le Sphinx. Love Sphinx was exhibited alongside Contre Ciel a few steps farther so the players could perceive the evolution of these musical Rosetta Stones to explore. So that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, take care and be playful.